Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, interview series with uh, Anjali Verma. She went to Denmark to do her master's and one week back she finished her master's in Denmark. So I knew Anjali because uh, when she was writing her SOP or the motivation letter, she asked to have a look and on it. So that's why that's how I know her. So we will make a short video series of four or five videos where we cover about studying in Denmark, how she got full scholarship in Denmark and the living in Denmark. So this first video will be focused on uh, studying masters in Denmark. What are the admission requirements? So off to you, Anjali, like maybe you can introduce yourself and give a brief background. So where are you from and how did you decide to come to Denmark? Hello everyone, I am Anjali and I am from uh, Rachi, Jharkhand and I did my bachelor's in electronics and communication from Urisa and after that I worked three years in uh, Wipro Technologies and then I decided to uh, go for MS. So uh, my, my first priority was to get MS in some European countries, uh, that was my priority, that's why I applied in Denmark, I also applied in Sweden, I applied in uh, Belgium as well. Uh, but the thing which attracted me most about Denmark was the full scholarship I received during my education, plus the stipend money, uh, which means they give you some money every month for living, to cover your living costs and food and everything. So yeah, that's why I decided to come to Denmark. Because if you don't get a scholarship in Denmark, it's a little bit... Ah, yeah, it's expensive. It's a Scandinavian country, so it's quite expensive, yeah. Okay, so which university in Denmark do you study for and how long was your master's program and what is your area of study? So I did my master's in uh, Sudansk University, which is also known as SU, University of Southern Denmark, in the southern part of Denmark, Sonoborg, which is very close to German border. So uh, I studied mechatronics here, which is mechanical plus electronics, but my main branch was power electronics because I did my bachelor's in electronics and communication. And uh, yeah, yes, Sombeth. Okay, and how long was it? Was it like two yeah, it years? Was, uh, yeah, sorry, it was, it was, yeah, two years with a final thesis presentation. Okay, uh, so uh, like most people always have this question whenever they come to any European country about the language of instruction yeah. and like integrating in the society. So what was your experience in the university? Like was it entirely in English, the language of instruction or did you face any language barrier? Yeah, I would like to share a little experience when I landed here in Copenhagen. Uh, people are really, really friendly. Danes are very friendly. They will help you in everything. And the most good thing is uh, uh, most of the Danes speak English because their entire education is in Danish and English. So you will have no problem in uh, interaction with people. But yes, when it comes to, you know, like um, uh, integration with the community or society, then you need to learn Danish because they are more comfortable and they are more open in their own language. So people here are really good, but you need to learn a little language here. And But my entire course of studies, the entire two years was completely in, in English. And the faculties we have here in SGU, they are also from many parts of the world. So it's completely in English. You have no problem in understanding anything because yeah, I, there's no Danish education in my university. It's completely English. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I gave GRE, uh, and but I, I don't think it's really important here in Denmark if you want to come, uh, you, you, it's not a requirement, a GRE is not a requirement, but yes, uh, ILTS or TOEFL is a requirement and in uh, European uh, countries they, I don't know why, but uh, more or less they give, give a little preference to ILTS. So I think if you come to Denmark, it's better to give ILTS than TOEFL because TOEFL is something for America or Canada. They give little preference there. But um, for 
for the requirements, uh, the ILTS is like you need to get above 7 or 7.5. And your GPA should be more than 7. Uh, but as far as I know, Danes are not so much uh, focused on uh, your grade. They want to see your personality. They want to see the person behind the grades. But yeah, if you have more than seven or eight, then then it's really a super case. So yeah. Okay. And you also obviously need a good SOP and the recommendation yes, letter, yes, right? Yes. That's very, very important if you want to study in Denmark. Uh, I mean, Please do give at least uh, three or four months to your SOP. I gave uh, around six months in preparing my SOP. As Sambit also knows, I was in regular contact with him. I was asking him to uh, help drafting my SOP and everything. So you need to be very, very good in your SOP when you uh, try to apply in these Scandinavian countries because they want to see the person behind the grades. For them, academic is not everything. They want to see uh, your extracurricular activities and how integrated you are in society and how you will be integrated in their society, how you will contribute when you come to Denmark. So it's very important. And uh, when it comes to letter of recommendation, you must have at least three letter of recommendation to apply in the University of Southern Denmark. Yeah. Okay. So did you take help of any consultancy or did you apply everything yourself when you were applying for all these universities? I applied everything by myself because when you apply everything by yourself, you feel a little confident, you know, that what you're writing about yourself, you're 100% sure and it's under your control. It's like totally true what you're writing about yourself. So. Yeah, that's why I, I prepared everything for myself. And I think it took me uh, around 1.5 years to, you know, give exams and prepare my SOP, letter of recommendation, transcript and everything. So I did everything by myself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because I think it's very important to have a time plan because when you come to some foreign country for education you need to have a time plan and uh, you you know you you create some milestones that you're gonna achieve this in three months this in six months so I, I did the same I was working in Wipro and after working there around 1.5 years I, I was uh, I, I was interested to do higher education and then I started researching about universities which universities should, uh, should I apply and everything and then if you if you ask me the total amount of time, then I I think I will say around two to two point five years for preparing mindset, preparing for exam and everything. So yeah. Okay, I, I guess that will be very helpful for anyone who is planning to come to any European country and apply. So any final advice do you want to give for students who want to apply for universities in Denmark? Yes. Um, as I said before as well, um, they are more interested to know a person behind the grades. So you need to be very, very clear in your SOP that what, in which and uh, a way, in which way you can contribute to their society and what new you will bring with you to Denmark. So you have to be, you know, kind of balanced, uh, uh, show your academic achievements plus show your personal achievements and your extracurricular and everything because for them uh, they like people when they come from other countries and they integrate in their society because that's the Danish way of living. They call it here Hugge, which means you have to be little integrated with the society and have a Hugge time, have a lovely time. So yeah, that's my okay. advice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Anjali, for giving your time for this uh, quick interview where we share about uh, admission requirements and how you apply to study masters in Denmark. So in the next video, we will discuss about the study experience because recently Anjali already finished her master's, so she will share her study experience of masters in Denmark. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for the next video. Don't forget to smash the like button if you have not. Then don't forget to share the video with all your friends and subscribe to the channel. So see you in next video. Till then, bye. <laughs>